How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. Back to another review. A little bit of Belgian dark reviewness. Hopeful goodness. In the form of, uh, yeah, Nostradamus. Uh, Belgian brown ale. 9% uh, alcohol by volume from uh, Brasserie Caracol. Um, I've reviewed this before. I have this bottle up here. From when I originally reviewed it, you'd see quite a bit bigger kind of label on that. The back even looks quite a bit different. This bottle I reviewed right when I first started doing beer reviews. Uh, so right around four or five years ago. And this was uh, best before 2012. So let's say five years ago for the sake of argument without looking stuff up. So this is, uh, you know, five from eight. That's 2013. This is about a year past best before uh, the end of uh, 2012. So, and I really dug it. I liked it. I've had it before. I've had it on draft. I've had it in smaller bottles, but it's been a while since I've had it. Uh, this is best before the end of 2017. Um, so you're talking about, you know, it's a little bit less past the best before the end date, but hey, we're going to give it a whirl um, and see what's what. This comes courtesy of Brian. Thank you very much. He is a, uh, a Belgian lo loving uh, brethren from down uh, Virginia way. Um, he sent this off. Uh, I don't think he went to Belgium, brought a bunch of beers back from Belgium. Um, and uh, I don't think this is one of them. I think this was the shelf one he got from out there. Pretty positive. Um, other than what it says on the front, it pretty much says on the back, Nostradamus, artisanal Belgian special brown ale, 9% alcohol by volume. And that'd be that, stored 55 degrees. Just about that, label-wise. Pretty much the same thing. A little kind of elven... Elvish, not Elvis, but Elfish, um, dude. A little kind of monocle, periscopy kind of thing going on there. What do they call those? I should know this. Um, in a little book, it's kind of whimsical, typical, you know, Belgian style kind of weirdness in their label. Give that a pop and uh, see what this sucker's got. Really in a mood for a good Belgian man. Oh man. It's been a bit, so hoping this one shows and proves. What do we have going on with this one? Um, bits and pieces. I can see the funk and all the bits and pieces kind of floating around in that sucker. Um, pinky finger, uh, what I like to my, not my coffee to look like, but my malted malt ball. Rich, deep kind of brown to it. A little bit of creaminess on top. Super uniform bubbles throughout. And that dirty doo-doo water that is quintessential for a Belgian dark. Now, they're talking about a Belgian Special brown now, 9%, that kind of murkiness. It's kind of burgeoning in that double wattage area. And I'm sure they're just doing their kind of special brown now just to be a little special or something. But yeah, she looks the part of a nice rich Belgian dark airing in the side of that kind of double uh, quad type area. Not necessarily your generic kind of Belgian dark. Let's see if you're going to nose. <sighs> That's to sugar daddy's baby. You're getting a sweet nice rich caramelized a little bit of kind of burnt brown sugar dulty kind of caramel vibes off it it's sweet but not overtly sweet i mean it's sweet it's very sweet it's a belgian nail it, it has that candy sugar kind of ad nauseum going on but it, 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 it's supposed to be there that's what it's supposed to be going on so i'm not necessarily saying it's not sweet it's not over sweet for the style yeah just that rich date figgy mixed with a little bit of sugar daddy thing going on there's this soft kind of slightly muted kind of red fruit kind of floating in the background nice bready notes kind of floating around there a bit of a delicious kind of fruity and bready yeasty goodness on top of that nice rich kind of caramel kind of sugar daddy date and figgy notes um and it just smells super delectable super drinkable well at the same time being nine percent not necessarily a bad thing let's dive in cheers That's more bittering than I thought it would be. It's a little bit watery, a little bit thin, definitely have a decent amount of oxidation going on. So this thing's been sent through the ringer a little bit. Or it could just be the way the beer is now compared to when I originally had it. Now they're talking about a best before date of 2017. The original one I had was a little bit further than that, but for me it held up a little bit. There might be even a little bit of the TCA kind of quirky thing going on here. You have a whole bunch of different angles coming at this beer with a bit of negativeness to it, but I still kind of dig it. Um, it has that nice kind of sweet sugar daddy, date and figgy kind of candy note to it. 
the oxidation has uh, kind of dropped out a bit of that body, made it a bit thinner. The cardboardy wet paper thing, I can get past, but at the same time, it's very, very readily apparent. And I want to love it. I want to like it so much. I want to just, I want to gush over it because I know how good this beer can be, but this one is just a little bit too far past where it should be. And like I said, I had ones that are aged longer than this, so it's not like this beer can't age just 9%. It's a Belgian-born beer. Um, it's meant to have a bit of legs to it, but, you know, who knows? Who knows where this beer was? Uh, it was bought off a shelf by, like I said, Brian. He could have been sitting on the shelf for months, sitting in the sun. I don't know. But it's still drinkable. It's still nice. It's still tasty. It's giving me very old-school kind of Belgian vibes in it that... Back in the day, you were kind of at the mercy of a distributor, whether or not they got beers, not just beers that you wanted, but any really Belgian beers at all. So a lot of times you'd run some some of these like super aged um, kind of Belgians and um, you just kind of bought them hoping they would be good because you had no other recourse. And I'm like, I'll go to the guy down the street and try to find something that's a little bit more well kept. No, it, you had to be a little bit more kind of, you know, throw your hands up in the air and just take what you could get kind of thing. And it kind of reminds me of living in that world that I lived in for many years when I originally got into beer. I still dig it. I can find redeeming qualities in this beer. I can still get down with it. I can still have fun with it. And I can still enjoy it, even though it is a bit past its prime. It's going to turn everybody on? No, especially if you're jumping from the new school hop thought, you know, haze bro, pastry stouty, kind of need this kind of sweetness on top of sweetness. Juiciness on top of juiciness thing, I don't think it would appeal to you even if it was in prime form. But if you get down with Belgian beers and understand how age can be a positive and negative, even though this one probably errs a little bit more on the negative side of things, it could still be an enjoyable experience. That's kind of where I'm getting with this one. So to taste a little bit of beer past that I wish it was a little bit more kind of what it could be rather than what it is, but at the same time, that's part of beer's journey, is kind of tasting beer not necessarily in its perfect prime. So you one get an idea of how beer ages and how things change on top of um, just kind of finding redeeming qualities and stuff, even if it's, um, yeah, listen, I'm a little bit, you know, homerism here. These are the kind of beers I love, I grew up on, so I can kind of pick and scratch it at it to find the things that I like about it. But, you know, on top of the oxidation, on top of the TCA, on top of all the other things, there's still a pretty beer in there. And uh, if you're willing to kind of look past its flaws, it's life, you know. Sometimes things are imperfect, but sometimes uh, you can find a little bit of prettiness and imperfection. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. It's one of the better Belgian darks that I've had as of late. Um, I've had much better ones, even from some American breweries, but that shouldn't diminish you from actually giving this beer a whirl. Like I said, I've had it several times, some better times than not, but overall, it's been a beer that I've dug over the years. So, all in all, I'd say it's definitely worth visiting if you end up finding one on the shelf. Uh, value availability, I forget what this costs. It might have had actually a, a price tag on it when it was sent to me. Actually, it did. You can still see the stickiness up there. Uh, it was probably 12 bucks, I think it was, which, you know, it's kind of decent price range when it comes to your kind of um, Belgian dark, especially aid stuff. And again, past its prime, but you know, a couple years sooner, find that wheelhouse, and it's, you're almost making out in a deal and leave you with, if you like what we like this, if you like Belgian beers, if you like aged beers, if you like salad beers, if you enjoy a beer, even if it is past its prime, this will definitely do you proper because it's giving you all those uh, um, notes that you'd really want to hit with these kind of Belgian darker beers, but it's a little bit, a little bit, you know, long in a tooth. And uh, well, not necessarily the most perfect thing in the world, it can still be pretty fun. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, didn't, anywhere in between, down there, words and stuff and things. Uh, Massive Beers. Check me out doing the whole social media stuff. If you want to check me out there. Uh, Beer Massive. You can check me out doing the whole podcasting thing if you want to check me out doing that whole stuff. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a nice little Belgian-style dark beer right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.